Hi, it's Skiffin Low Bates here, and today I thought I would start a video series based on a slide deck produced by Tommaso Di Bartolo on use cases for NFTs. And the very first slide covers the idea of NFTs in games. Now, if you read the press, you'll see that a lot of articles have appeared over time discussing that gamers are, generally speaking, very much against the idea of NFTs in games. However, the only article I could find where some actual numbers were given stated that 45% of gamers were against the idea of games using NFTs to represent in-game items and skins and things like that, with 65% being either ambivalent or positive about the idea. And I think there's quite an issue surrounding NFTs and games, and this boils down to the marketing and sales model that games use in order to raise revenue. Now, gamers are understandably wary of changes on the basis that historically there have been plenty of examples of game companies doing all sorts of things to try and extort money effectively out of the pockets of gamers. And games have become very expensive because you're not just shelling out the money for the initial game, there are all sorts of tricks and psychological traps laid to get gamers to part with more and more money over time. And similarly, serious gamers are concerned about games moving in a direction where you either win through skill or by chucking a load of money at the game. And in the long run, that degrades the gaming experience for everybody. However, personally, I see a lot of advantages to NFTs in games, and I think that in the long run, they're going to be beneficial for the gamer rather than for the game company. And the reason I believe that is as follows. Game companies have historically gone to a lot of effort to prevent secondary markets for the objects in their games. The game companies like to keep control. They want to ensure that the game items stay in the game and that players can't easily swap them with each other. And the reason for that is that if you sell another new copy of something, that makes the game company a lot more money than if people actually start giving each other their stuff as they get bored of it. So you can think here, for example, of lending books to a friend rather than that friend buying a copy, or back in the days when we all bought compact discs and vinyl before that, um, making a cassette copy of a record or giving a friend a CD rather than going down the store and buying another copy. So being able to trade in-game items should actually reduce the costs for the players and unfortunately for the game companies, reduce their profits. However, with the way that blockchain works, and in particular the way that smart contracts work, there is an opportunity for game companies to actually extract some of that value back to themselves through, for example, charging a transfer fee or a royalty. And again, history is littered with examples of marketplaces just like that. For example, the trading of football players between uh, football clubs um, springs to mind as one example of how the organizations behind particular events manage to get more money for themselves in a marketplace. So hopefully over time there'll be some kind of balance whereby the gamers are happy and the game companies are happy. Now what I don't think is going to happen is that these NFTs re representing in-game items are going to somehow transfer from game to game particularly easily. And the problem there is that, uh, firstly, what's the motivation for game company A to use the NFTs of game company B in their own game? It might be nice for a gamer who has managed to gain a, a car in a racing game to then go into um, a different game, like, uh, for example, a, a horse racing game or a... a knights and wizards game and find that that car has magically transformed into a horse in that game but honestly what's the motivation for the game company to use assets from other games it might be an interesting marketing gimmick um, it might allow them to piggyback on the success of other games but generally speaking i think they are still going to be isolated silos so then what is the advantage of NFT in-game items for players? 
and here I draw on a particular experience in my own life which really brought home to me the control that gaming companies have over your assets in their game. At the moment, all these assets are in databases run by those game companies, and that gives them godlike powers as to what they can do with them. And what happened to me was that my son accidentally blew 500 euros on in-game items in a Supercell game called Clash of Clans and in Roblox. And this was because my mobile phone had mobile pay turned on by default, something that I wasn't aware of. I had naively thought that mobile phone companies would require you to enable a wallet and have it off by default, but no, they do it the other way around here in Finland. And it turned out that I couldn't complain to the mobile phone company. Google was completely unresponsive. And when I raised this issue with Roblox and with Supercell, they both took the same action. They cancelled my son's account and they deleted all the items therefore and I didn't get a refund. Well, actually, I got a, a, a one euro and 98 cents refund from Roblox. And there really was not much I could do about it. Yes, I could go through a complicated process of litigation and try and identify the party that I should sue and involve the ombudsman. And then maybe a year or two later, I might get the money back. What would never come back is the year that my son spent playing these games and building up his character and his portfolio of assets. That was just gone. Now, if all those things in the game had been NFTs stored on the database that is uh, a blockchain, independent of the game companies, then at least we could have gone to a secondary market and sold off those things to other players and realized some of the money that we'd spent and therefore also some of the time that had been spent um, in terms of real cash with the current system that's not possible now my experience and my son's experience is a rare one most gamers don't go through that kind of experience but i think over time enough of them will have enough of these experiences that when they realize there is an alternative namely that these objects actually become genuinely owned by the players rather than not owned by the players just recorded against them in a uh, database controlled by the centralized organization that is the game company when players start realizing that there are some benefits to them i think there will be a positive shift towards representing in-game items as objects that the players actually definitely own rather than just being in that database so um i think this is going to take time and matters are not helped by the fact that we're still seeing scandal after scandal in the blockchain cryptocurrency and nft world rightfully making newcomers to this space a bit suspicious but hopefully over time that'll all move into the past we'll have some more regulation we'll have better controls and there'll be better understanding and then the benefits of these kind of technologies in games should start to become more apparent but i'm not holding my breath i'm not expecting this to happen very quickly i've been talking about uh, blockchain and games on and off since about 2016 and there have been a lot of developments over time i've never been particularly excited by play to earn games or things like axie infinity and stuff like that the games themselves seem pretty naive to me and it's going to take a while it's really actually going to take the game studios to onboard this technology rather than the other way around, namely blockchain companies trying to develop into game companies. But uh, that's just my personal opinion. Anyway, there's no central focus to this discussion about NFTs and games uh, other than the fact that it's early days. There's a lot of misunderstanding. There's a lot of agendas from the different parties who are either for or against it. Those who are for it are blockchain enthusiasts and crypto evangelists. Those who are against it are the incumbent game companies. At some point, the two will experience, I think, a synthesis. And then we'll see the next generation of games plus NFTs where the actual use cases make sense and benefit both the game companies and the players in equal measure. But, you know, I'm the kind of person who always lives in hope and you just have to wait and see what actually happens. So uh, that's the first video in this series based on Tommaso Di Bartolo's 
NFT slide set. Uh, there should be another 10 if I manage to cover every single slide. Um, hope you've enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye for now.